From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, the one-stop shop to find all my columns, as well as to sign up for the totally free Huckabee newsletter, which is how you get my columns beamed to your email inbox twice a day. Let's take a look back at some of the stories that are grabbing headlines, and maybe some you might have missed. If you believe the liberal news media and smug online pundits, you'd think the most vaccine hesitant are a bunch of undereducated and uneducated saps, maybe even Trump supporters. Well, turns out, according to new polling, the most vaccine resistant group in terms of education level are those with PhDs. How's that for a narrative buster? And how about this? Also turns that it's really not Trump supporters or Republicans in general who are skeptical of the vaccine. How do these people identify themselves politically? According to CNN polling, people who are detached from the political process and didn't vote for either major candidate in 2020, that's who, must have pained CNN to have to report that conclusion if they even did. And a recent MIT study concluded that a substantial portion of public health skepticism was highly informed, scientifically literate, and sophisticated in the use of data. That's right, sophisticated. Which is exactly how a New York Times reporter described the maskless crowd at Barack Obama's 60th birthday party last weekend. Obama took some heat for the birthday blowout of this compound on Martha's Vineyard. Hundreds of guests, no mask, no social distancing. But Annie Carney, a White House correspondent for the Times, said there was nothing to worry about because the crowd is vaccinated, but more importantly, the crowd was sophisticated. I wonder how many PhDs were there. No comment from Dr. Anthony Fauci on the birthday party either, of course, but he does think the Sturgis Mike motorcycle rally in South Dakota has the potential to be a super spreader event. But you know, if you look at last year, the same event, out of the 462,000 in attendance, there were a grand total of 463 reported COVID cases. But here's what Fauci said about this year's event and your freedom in general. It's understandable that people want to do the kinds of things they want to do. They want their freedom to do that. But there comes a time when you're dealing with a public health crisis that could involve you, your family and everyone else that something supersedes that need to do exactly what you want to do. Former California governor and Terminator actor Arnold Schwarzenegger put it a little more bluntly when he said this week, screw your freedom. Well, how Californian of him. On to the Twitterverse we go, where a report by Christopher Rufo made the rounds. American Express has been conducting indoctrination trainings. And this is a good one. The multi-billion dollar company seems to think that capitalism is racist. To which I say, could stupid get any more stupid? If American Express thinks profit is racist, then simply give your services for free and return the $2.3 billion to cardholders like me. Rufo goes on to report that it was part of the credit card giant's critical race theory training program, which asked workers to deconstruct their racial and sexual identities and then rank themselves in a hierarchy of privilege. And even common phrases are subjected to race-based regulation. White employees are told not to utter phrases such as, I don't see color, or we're all human beings. And this one prohibited. Everyone can succeed in this society if they work hard enough. All are categorized as microaggressions. As I said, I think the only solution here is to redistribute all the profits back to us oppressed cardholders. Next up, how about a shame on you to the left coast governor? This one is a doozy. The Oregonian newspaper, not exactly a conservative outlet, uh, reports that Governor Kate Brown signed a law to allow Oregon students to graduate without proving that they can write or do math. She doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah, I'll bet not. In July, she quietly signed into law Senate Bill 744. It suspends basic requirements. You know, stuff like 
being able to read, write, and do basic math. The bill also directs the State Department of Education to use the suspension to evaluate how the state assesses academic requirements to receive a diploma and to make recommendations with the goal of equity in mind. In other words, let's just dumb everyone down to the same level. You know, it's like the movie Idiocracy. It's becoming more of a documentary every day. Well, finally, some hard fundraising numbers in the Florida gubernatorial race. Challengers to Governor Ron DeSantis, Democrats Nikki Freed and Charlie Crist, raised a combined $400,000 in the month of July. That's compared to DeSantis's $4 million haul just in the month of July. And with that, I leave you with a thought from Thomas Edison. I quote, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up, end quote. So until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.